Okay, the meeting is um, <coughs> the meeting starting now, guys. Uh, Alright, um, the topic today is that resolve that America should get involved in the uh, Invisible War. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know what the Invisible War is, it's a civil war that's going on over in Uganda where uh, Joseph Kony is um, kidnapping children to uh, work for him as soldiers in what he calls his Lord's Resistance Army. Um, a lot, there's been a, uh, an organization called Invisible Children getting involved with this, um, trying to help the children and funnel money to um, get these chickens out of um, uh, the armies and stuff, so um, if you guys feel that America should get involved in the war or you feel that you shouldn't, feel free to speak. Alright, basically, so today's forum is going to be a thought talk. What we do is a thought talk, as you guys know, we just kind of like give our ideas out. We're not going to be debating and cutting each other up yet. So, um, mainly, this isn't based off of it. Invisible Children is a credible source or not, which you guys can talk about, but this isn't a threat against Invisible Children. Thank you for Daniel Gilbach and Katya for coming from Invisible Children. <laughs> Um, so basically today we're going to be centering our eyes like to what extent should America even go into Uganda if they even should is what the main topic we'll be talking about is and I'll be kind of curving questions at you guys so does anyone want to start us off or who believes that anything is for us oh Elton well, before I start, I'm just going to warn you that you're all probably going to hate me by the time I'm done with this speech. Too late. But <laughs> I already hate everyone, so it's all good. But, um, well, if you think of it this way, Joseph Kony is a drop in the ocean of problems compared to everything else in Africa. In fact, in Uganda, the biggest worry right now to Ugandans is, is Al-Qaeda. Weird, right? But Al-Qaeda actually, you know, has a lot more power and influence within Africa and the Middle East, more than we actually know. The second thing is, if we do involve ourselves within this conflict, what good will it do? I can tell you right now that we're probably going to end up killing all the people we want to save. If they're using child soldiers, and as many as they are, and we're going to fight their army, aren't we going to technically kill those child soldiers? And secondly, the only reason this issue has been brought up, to me at least, is that recently, back in November of 2011, they found oil in Uganda. Surprise, surprise, a few months later, there's a lot of attention about Uganda. Does that link up? I think so. And uh, by the way, if any of you don't know, name, you can name any nation in the Middle East, name any nation in Africa, name any nation in Asia, in fact, any nation even in South America, and you will find places that do employ child soldiers. The only reason we're focusing on this one is because A, no offense to any invisible children people here, but the organization did play up the issue quite a bit. B, there is a lot of profitable things to be found in Uganda, and C, we're just raising this for awareness. Honestly, if we do anything, chances are we're going to kill everything we want to save anyways. <laughs> Arna, does anyone believe the exact opposite that we should be involved in this? I'm kind of like a cocktail. I just want to argue with Elton. Would you like to say anything? I know you're very passionate about this. Well, he was saying... Stand up! Okay, first what we do is in Jason we stand up and then we give our beliefs up. We say our name and then uh, we also uh, we make sure that people respect the speakers so you have like all the authority and power and stuff. Well, my name is Tati and I'm co-president of the Digital Children with Daniel. And um, I'm not much of a debate talker or anything, but basically it, he was saying that it's just a small portion of the problem in Africa and Uganda in the world, if that, you know. But the point of Invisible Children is to get the word out and how are you going to solve any problems if you don't talk about it. So you have to start somewhere small because the reason that there's problems in other places of the world is because no one talks about it, you don't hear about it, no one knows about it. So in order to fix problems, you have to you know, start somewhere, even if it's small, even if it's in one portion of Uganda, which Kony did start in Uganda, but he has also moved to other parts of Central Africa, so he is expanding and he is moving. So you have to start somewhere. That's what I'm saying. Okay, you said that like Kony is like a drop in the ocean compared to all the problems. Well, you know who else might have been a drop in the ocean? Was Hitler. Hitler did not start off big, but because the Holocaust happened because the world turned a blind eye and said, oh, it wasn't that, it was that important, it's Euro's problem. And it's just the Jews, whatever. They just played it down that, oh, they're just making this bigger than it really is. So to say that, oh, it's not that, like, we have to wait more things. 
better things to worry about. Don't turn a blind eye to injustice. Alright, um, to address your issue, I'm not saying that the problem is non-existent. I'm not saying we should turn a blind eye to it. What I'm saying is that if we're just going to focus on this one child soldier employing dictator, if you will, or a tyrant, if you will, then that'd be an affront to every other child soldier that is around the world. Because we're only focusing on one, when there are many other people who do the same thing. And as for uh, your issue of comparing to Hitler, the problem with this is that, well, frankly, it's not just a single issue. I'm not saying we're playing it down. What I'm saying is, basically, we should, instead of just focus on Uganda, we might say focus on the rest of the world. Because it happens in many, many places. I can guarantee you that if you look in Asia, there are child soldiers being employed there. Not necessarily in the soldier capacity, but they're still being used. So, okay, here's, and here's another example. So, child soldiers, right? So what about child labor? Why don't we care about that? Oh wait, because we profit off of that. The reason why we are focusing on Uganda right now is because, in my opinion, we're, pro we're gonna use that as an excuse to profit off of the government. Because there are child soldiers anywhere else, South Africa, the Ivory Coast, Sudan, Kenya, Nigeria, you name any African country in that area, I guarantee you that the warlords within those places will have at least a few employed child soldiers at one point in time, or still do now. I do agree that the first step to solve any problem is talking about it. And without talking about it, you can't get to the next step, which is action. But I want to ask us, though, how are we going to solve this problem? Because what's happening right now, there's a civil war in Uganda, and it's between the LRA and the Uganda National Army, okay? Now, um, some of you might not know this, but some of the funds from Invisible Children, which is a good organization, goes to the Uganda National Army to fight Joseph Kony. Now, I'm for fighting Joseph Kony and all, but the Uganda National Army has been accused of raping and killing with no rhyme or reason to that. So, I mean, if we stop Joseph Kony, say we stop him, and we help the Uganda National Army win, we help them gain back their country, then what good is that going to do if they're just as corrupt, if they're just as ruthless, if not maybe even more than Joseph Kony's men? We're not solving a problem here, we're creating a new one later down the line. So much attention to Kony is because he's the number one indicted world world war criminal. So you have to start somewhere. So by getting him off of the top list, then they can start by going down and getting everyone else out. Um, along with Daniel was saying, Elton, I completely agree with your point that there is a lot of issues in the world, but um, well, both Katya and uh, Daniel, so we have to pinpoint at one spot right now. Um, since we already have raised awareness, over 17 million people have watched that video of Kony. People know about invisible children, people know what's going on. We should start somewhere. And what this would do is if we plan to go to different countries, we spread ourselves too thin. Like, I, I, I give this analogy because this year for senior year, I took too many classes, too many extra classes, yada, yada, yada. And I thought maybe I could pinpoint myself in chemistry, but I can't do it because I spread myself too thin. Now just as a government, if we focus on one area at a time, we can take them down. And if we start as Coney, the number one right now, I think we'll be taking a great step as a world, not just as a country. Um, hi guys, my name is Anthony, and you know, I think that's a great point you made, um, Zeeshan, but this, still the thing about this is that, um, like El Elton already established, is that there are just so many other problems, so many other dictators, so many other tyrants that are using these child soldiers that um, it would be difficult to, you know, kind of save all that because we want to. We want to make sure that those sort, of, that sort of adversity is gone from the world. And I understand the point of pinpointing, okay, well, let's just start with Coney for now. The thing about that is that, you know, it's really, there isn't too much of a benefit other than beyond, you know, humanitarian reasoning. It's just that we're going, we're liberating these child soldiers from an evil man. Well, what else? Like, we're just saving these children. I know it sounds callous, I know it sounds wrong, but I mean, as of now, there's nothing that the United States can benefit from it. And in a recession, we're going through uh, social unrest with what we've seen the Occupy protests, and we're in the middle of a war in the Middle East, and it's just so many things going on with America right now, is that adding another, you know, another thing on our chore list, so to speak, it's just that it's almost putting us over the top, and we're not receiving any sort of long-term benefits that could 
help us later. You know, if we if we establish some sort of de de democracies in the Middle East, then that's going to help us. Because then we'll have an ally, or we'll be able to liberate some sort of oil oil reserves. Or if we, you know, solve what we're, what's going on domestically, well, then we're not going to have people that are going to be in poverty or in disease. So all those are priorities, but this going out of our way to go into Africa when you know we were there back in you know the 1990s in Somalia, and now we're out of there, we're done with Africa. There's really no point in going back just to save some children. So I know it it sounds bad, but I mean we got to think for ourselves. We got to look out for number one. And right now, America, we are hurting, and we don't need to get involved in another possible war with the LRA. When we're talking about uh, American uh, interference in the, in the physical war, we're all talking about military interference, right? Or are different? Or do people have any other uh, anything else they want to add to the resolution? Monetary. Monetary? Yeah. Okay. I don't know what that means. Uh, money. Well, I mean, if we give money to the Ugandan government, that would still be interfering in the war even if we don't send troops over. Okay, so um, just to clarify, because I think we're kind of running circles here, um, the, uh, the resolution, yeah, the resolution is, um, should the United States interfere mon in a monetary way or uh, militarily in the invisible war? I think we're missing a great point here, and that's what America does really well when we get involved in other countries. We do more harm than good. Okay, every time that we've been involved in foreign affairs, we've screwed something up. Let's admit it. World War I, we screwed up Germany. World War II, we screwed up Germany again. Now we screwed up Japan. Regardless of whether or not they were enemies, we screwed them up. El Salvadorian Revolution is a great example because La Guerra, the uh, rebellion forces, actually employed child soldiers. So we thought, hey, we'll help the military dictatorship instead. So we sent soldiers over to send arms, monetary um, assistance, and we trained their soldiers. And you know what happened? The, you know how the Guerra reacted? They got more child soldiers because they were running out of troops. Because you know what? We were killing their troops. They needed more troops. They took more children. It was an endless cycle. It was pointless of us to do so. And furthermore, the, um, when we were doing fighting, a civil war is dirty business. It, this happens within your own state, within your own country. There aren't exactly a lot of uncivilized areas in like a whole country. A lot of fighting happens near civilization. So what happened was thousands of soldiers, I mean thousands of civilians and their children were shot as a result of this war. What if we help in Uganda? What's going to happen? Is it going to just be another reflection of the um, El Salvadorian re um, revolution? 